Living in the wasted world means facing the very real possibility of a sudden, violent death. Every day you survive is a triumph. When you also have an opponent who wants you dead, the odds are against you. The defenders of Bastion have withstood many dangers and have even been captured by their enemies, but have come through every time. Today, the war they have been preparing for comes to their doorstep. Hello, and I'm going to assume that I can see my screen went on again. Oh, there I am. Um, yes, I warned everyone they would need a lot of dice. So uh, the reasons for that involve a coming war. Uh, there has been uh, echoes of this war for almost <laughs> nine months of real time. So that's enough to create a baby that will also create a fictional post-apocalyptic war. All right, let's bring everybody on. Uh, today is going to be um, a little less standard narrative. We're going to go in and out of the narrative, but also do some straight battle stuff. So uh, let me introduce our, our team of both players and characters. Well, we have the delicious Shannon McCormick as Lord Devad, master of the mystic arts and possessor of the best D&D stickers in all of Folderdom. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's basically, that's me, I guess. Nailed it. Nailed it. We have Jordan T. Maxwell, uh, the man with the golden voice, uh, actor, improviser, gamer, coxman, <laughs> legend, portraying Grendel. Uh, Grendel is a troll, he is a mercenary. He is a man who worked for Curse and said, no, sir, swipe left. And he's left the service of the bad man, and today we'll get a chance to strike back. Hey, we'll do that <laughs> soon. Uh, and we... both. <laughs> so um, it's been a while since we've seen two for it, right? Like did you, you've only appeared in um, tales, right? Mm. Yeah. Two first showed up and traveled with uh, the tax man and his lordship. She yeah, did. That's yeah, correct. And helped hatch a baby. Yeah, Tuper, Tuper was there for the uh, baby episode. <laughs> so the magnificent Tanya Lard, uh, <laughs> a, a mistress of tea, a master of cost, mistress of costumes. I'll take master too. Gamer, <laughs> actor, improviser, front to back magnificent person. And by the way, I'm totally digging the um, the goblin by way of death from the endless thing you have going on. Right. Um, I don't know what's happening. I keep trying to adjust <laughs> my light and my camera keeps adjusting back. So I'm <laughs> just going to absolutely look like death. The, the, the fates have chosen a look for you today. <laughs> and uh, she's portraying, uh, portraying Tufer. Uh, Tufer is, in fact, a 30 Rock reference. Tufer is two for the price of one because they are both a goblin and a cyborg. Tufer comes equipped with kind of uh, janky. I just submitted the uh, big chunk of the first pass of the, the cybernetics rules for look, I like to think out. of it as they're cyborgs and some of them look pretty like slick some of them look a little cobbled together Tufer comes off as a little junkyard dog <laughs> yes. yes there's a whole level of uh, cybernetic enhancements that are called uh, jank tech uh, which is stuff that's cobbled together from bits of robots and actuators and, and that's, that's Tufer uh, Tufer is legs that make noise when she walks, uh, but Tufer has thrown pianos at people, has flipped cars. Uh, Tufer is uh, 382 pounds of badass. In four and a half feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's ex extremely dense. <laughs> to be fair, my legs make noise when I walk now, so I don't know if that's such an impressive feat. Yeah, I was wearing uh, corduroy there, Jordan. <laughs> nope. And the third, nope. Legendary impro <laughs> Austin improviser, uh, Barrett, the big man tribe, uh, 
who not only is uh, amazing on stage, he is amazing in the ring and commenting about the ring. It's true. Uh, he it's is up. conflict. He is two snakes <laughs> pointing at each other made into a man. And that man is just looking for stage time whenever he can That's get it. Right. <laughs> uh, Gold Agent Goldwater uh, is an agent of the IRS. Goldwater is such a magnificent human. It doesn't matter to him at all that there is no damn IRS. And there hasn't been a U.S. for over a century. But fucking a job's a job, right? So he's got the suit. He has the clipboard. He has the forms. He has the badge. Bam, IRS. So he has been going through the waste of land, being a municipal agent, drawing money away from people that were supposed to have paid their taxes. He has amazingly managed to get three different groups of people to pay up which I think is awesome because your drop box is often just an empty pneumatic tube that goes nowhere. <laughs> I love the yeah. idea you just go to station four and you're like, money that no one uses into the tube. I'm done. <laughs> I get a gold star. <laughs> uh, but uh, Goldwater has proven to be an invaluable member of the team with no leaders. And in many ways, he is the closest that this group has ever come to actually having a leader. All right, so that's my coked up version. I mean, Diet Coke in this case. My coked up version of your intros. Um, today, this group has gathered in Bastion. Bastion is what the new name of the Shire was. So for a long time, the home of this group has been the Shire. The Shire was one of those Bucky's style uh, roadside mega marts where you can come and get a shower for 50 cents and put the quarters in and you can watch you know you get you know little movies on, on little set little sets on a little bank uh, uh you have the equivalent of like a trailer park for different food it was a food court they've been living in there uh and the people that had inhabited this place were from an old ren fair so they called it the shire because they were all ye old and you know how those crazy ren fair people are mm -hmm. uh and they're very very much like uh, rooting for your favorite night by wearing fun colors. But the group has taken over in uh, game time. Uh, you first came to the Shire over a year in game time ago. So it's almost in sync with real time at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the characters have aged, the ones that we've seen since the beginning have aged over a year at this point. Some of you have just pulled up. Among that number would be Nevad, Goldwater, and uh, Grendel. Uh, Grendel was surprised to see that some of his men have returned. You had meant to meet them here. That was always the plan. Uh, and they surprised you with news that the enemy is on their way to Bastion. So to go back over that point in case people weren't watching last week, and if you weren't, I don't know what you were doing, but you should have been here. Uh, but the, the battalion. The great shopping episode. <laughs> exactly. Uh, right. You come back with a truck full of am bad ammunition and not great weapons, things that you can, they're certainly way better than nothing. And uh, so at this point, um, let's go ahead and take a look at Bastion. Can we cult? All right. There's going to be a fair amount to take in there, especially um, those of you who are viewing and have not seen this map before. And honestly, the players have only seen a little of it. Let me give you a brief tour. So in the middle where it's labeled the keep, uh, that would be the, uh, the travel center. So this is uh, sort of a, uh, if you live in the South and you know what a uh, Bucky's is, they're built to be symmetrical. So that the left wing is a mirror of the right wing. This was basically emptied out and uh, was squatted in and they built uh, um, <clears throat> huts and shelter in this place. It has now been over time, and this started with the characters' actions, but in your ab ab absence, it was redoubled. It used to be a problem because uh, there were a lot of big glass windows. Those kinds of places have massive glass windows. Those have all been boarded over, so the place has been secured, and this has become effectively the redoubt. So the reason they call it the keep is in case of attack, if you're not going to be contributing to fighting, the general order is go to the keep, lock the doors, batten down the hatches, stay safe. 
Uh, my screen keeps slipping away. That's rude. Okay, there's a sniper tower. I'm going to go ahead and move Mr. Goldwater out of the way there. We described this a uh, couple of games, last game and a couple of games ago. Uh, it is tall enough that it has a, a line of sight to pretty much anywhere around this area. The other thing is it's got a very strong light in it. Um, I don't know if anyone has heard of the old uh, moon towers where they used to put arc lights in them to light, uh, light large areas, kind of like the way we uh, light up like Walmart these days. But they would do that for whole cities. They'd put a uh, super intense light up there. So generally somebody with a sniper rifle gets up there, they light up from underneath so it's not glaring into them and that's Overwatch. Quickly going around garage, you know what that is. The stables is the parking lot where your vehicles tend to be pulled in. The condos are places uh, where people have built shelters underneath what used to be the fuel station. So you know how the fuel stations have uh, some of the nicer ones, they have kind of those molded plastic, you know, uh, weather shades. Those made perfect um, kind of like uh, outdoor hotel rooms once you hang barriers to make little individual rooms out of it. And the nickname for those is the condos. You can see the front and back gate. There is an inside and outside guard station for those. The stores are literally extra stores. Now, some of them are kept in the keep, but stuff that's more volatile or that might rot is generally kept outside in this fenced in area. So things like, you know, salted meat or whatever. Uh, there's a big gas tank out here. Uh, generally, you don't keep that stuff in the keep. The dog park is exactly what it sounds like. The market is an open air market. It's a lot like a um, more active uh, flea market. So like uh, most countries, but this one, there's markets like this that are very lively. And, um, so those areas are on the outside. You'll see that I've divided them I think into six, yeah, there are six areas and uh, that will make it easier for us to tell where things are approaching. Around the outside here, you'll see arrows pointing to locations. For example, for example uh, drainage ditch, steep hill, where the highway is and so forth. When you look up at that map, um, anything that's been pointed to like that is at distant range. So it's over there. The stuff in, in kind of that bloody band around the outside there, that's all far. Pretty much everything inside the walls here and right down depending whether you're on the wall or not, that's all gonna be close. So that's an illustration of what the three ranges end up being, mm -hmm. at least in this case. All right, um, quickly here you see the ramp, you can figure that all out. There within range is, uh, there's an overgrown, overgrown park, uh, bombed out, uh, hey, I gotta move those away so we can read, man. Strip mall, so you can see it over there. Uh, local feeder does not mean uh, some dude that's gained a lot of weight. It is the feeder road, the main road to this part of the suburb that the area is adjacent to. Drainage ditch, steep hill. So a couple of quick things about that. The drainage ditch was an obvious enemy sneaking up, oh shit, that's terrible news kind of thing. So you have put a bunch of bear traps and uh, you know uh, ambush uh, deterrents along in there. The steep hill, uh, you have put nail boards and things like that. So someone tries to charge down that hill, they're going to have a nasty surprise. So you've reinforced a bit. You also have, uh, you've seen this a few times, when you take a long board, you put a chain between them and you do spiky nails in all directions and you stretch that out, you can make uh, tail pop, uh, tire poppers. You have a bunch of those kind of all the way around the building, uh, the compound, except for the roads in. But the roads in, you've put Humpty Humps so that you have to approach slowly or you're gonna risk your suspension. Mm -hmm. So you basically, basically, and this has all been done in your absence. So this is the six months when you were looking for a new home. This had all been done in your absence. So let's go back to the main interaction screen. Then we'll go back to the uh, tactical screen in just a minute. Um, so uh, Grendel, uh, your your second uh, says, "Yeah, I we, we came back as fast as we could because they're they're coming." man um 
I, I know we were talking about maybe trying to set up some explosives or, but I, I think we got maybe 15 minutes, half an hour. All right. Let's get everyone inside the fortifications. Anyone who can't fight needs to be protected towards the center. Get everyone we can up on the walls, get everyone to their stations. Anyone that can fight will fight. So who's, uh, who's the boss? Is it, uh, you or the IRS guy or the, the boy wizard? Like, who's in charge? I serve, I, I turn to Nevada and Goldwater. I serve at your pleasure. I do as you command. If you want me to lead these men, I will, but I'll also fall into line if. So, Trooper, you're walking up and you actually hear that exchange. You've come here with uh, people from your settlement. Because one of the things that's been happening is this curse is stretching out and gaining territory. Some people have had to abandon, uh, and many refugees have come here. So you have a bunch of goblins with you who are going to be able to fight, and that you're the de facto leader of. Leading is not normally your thing, but you'll notice I've added a rank of leading to your sheet because you've had to do a little bit of it. Uh, so you're not totally hopeless. Um, <laughs> so... Tufer comes walking over, and Tufer, you're generally like. Uh, Did I just get there, or have I been there a little bit? You've been there for like a day and a half. Okay. And you're generally goblin height, unless you lift up on your legs, right? Right. I'm actually more like five foot. Yeah. Um, unless I'm standing next to Navad, and then I sort of slowly rev my servo, <laughs> like ratchet up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> a little little jealousy kind of thing uh, you but do like it. real slow because right. like nobody notices except you can hear it it's like you can ee- talk to it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um um i mean look <clears throat> um i've not got the most experience with leading or choosing a leader usually leaders are chosen you know what i babble um <clears throat> but uh you know tax man's got a good head on his shoulders and i'm i'm willing to listen to what he says i know how to delegate i'll take charge all right so uh let's go back to the it's somewhat a little bit out of character let's go back to that map and what we need to do now is uh, I'm putting uh, Tufer in charge of the goblins. Uh, there are two types of goblins you'll see there. There are skirmishers and raiders. Okay. Uh, what you've got, and we're not going to share this with the class. Um, anyone watching, they've got stat blocks that I gave them. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the stat block is going to be your difficulty at each range. We're not going to do to hit and then damage. I have abstracted out their effectiveness at each range. Okay. So you're just going to be determining how many scores you get when you attack at range, which is why we'd maybe use big enough bunches of dice, because if you have three, they maybe roll four dice each, you roll 12 dice, just figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. So we don't, when we're dealing with the NPCs, we're dealing with the military units, you're rolling for big groups at once. Like the goblins are anywhere to four to eight in a group. The settlers, especially the militia, are larger groups because they're less effective individually. Um, the two groups for the goblins, you're going to get your skirmishers and raiders. You'll see that the numbers are different. The skirmishers are close combat. Right. The oh, raiders right. have uh, spears and crossbows. So I'm right. Okay. Uh, the hits there are the number of hits they're going to take. That second number is where they're going to become red and get reduced effectiveness. Uh, okay. You're going to be wrong. <laughs> the general number of dice you're going to roll, regardless of unit type, is always four. If the unit has gone red, you only roll two. I may give you an advantage, disadvantage style, die up or die down, depending on situation, but that's the basic rule. Uh, okay. The settlers, which I'm giving over um, in character a little bit to Nava, but I think more to Shannon as a player. Okay. Um, the two types of those are militia and defenders. The difference when you look at the numbers are the militia have uh, close and near weapons. And they, so they have like, you know, spears, clubs, things like that. The raiders mm-hmm. actually have some of those shitty guns you're unloading from the truck. 
some of them actually had you know white rifles things like that. okay so they've actually they can actually fight at uh far they can shoot stuff yeah yeah uh and we're not worried exactly about getting down to the granularity of what everybody individually has but the general effectiveness of the units is going to work just fine based on these lines um and grendel you have your battalion uh you have four units in total two units of maulers two units of reavers maulers are for closer combat reavers are for farther combat okay Simple. uh and um Barrett, I gave you the Knights of Torg. Mm -hmm. uh, you have three units of them. They are basically the best units on the board. Uh, they're good at all, reasonably good at all ranges and have a, a decent number of hits. Yeah. So what I need you to do now, and hopefully doing it quickly enough, uh, to make it more interesting, you can interact, interact as characters while figuring this out, but you're gonna show me the initial distribution of these forces. One thing to bear in mind uh, when you're looking at the table here is you can overlap these these counters a little bit. So like okay. if I want to defend an area and do that to make it easier to read and keep track of, just go ahead and overlap. Okay. Similarly, for example, if you want uh, one of the knights to be riding in one of the vehicles, kind of like when they met you at the gate, you would do that to indicate that that unit is in that vehicle. Make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, it does. However, I just want to make sure I understand the uh, the 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 key here. Uh, yes. These guys. This is the um, the militia. In all cases, the silver rings are going to be the first thing I listed, and the gold will be the second. Okay. Okay. So got skirmishers, gotcha. raiders. Okay. Um, okay. going along the wall, and I mentioned this briefly in the email yesterday. It's all kind of junk, put a, you know, a butted up, think uh, Fallout 4 or Fallout 76, right? But there's gaps that have chain link to shoot out of. But there are many, many places that have ramps and partial catwalks. So any place that's directly adjacent to a wall, you can use that as a place to shoot out. Oh, also, where do we expect uh, Curse's men are coming from? Are they coming from... That was going to be my question. <laughs> Which direction <laughs> are we... There are a lot of them, and they're coming from the direction marked Drainage Ditch, but it's very likely that they... You fought them before, and generally their tactics, and Grendel would know this, would be uh, they send out a scouting party. Uh -huh. Fought or seen evidence of those scouting parties at least four times. Mm -hmm. scouting parties will almost always be a pickup truck and two motorcycles they'll go in they'll get the read of an area sometimes they'll kind of push at it and attack to, to figure out if it's a hard target or a soft target and then they come in with a larger force when there's a larger force their lieutenants are canny enough that they will use mixed units they will use different uh, area you know points of approach so that's not like they're coming or a Kai style, they're not all like, look to the west, and right. I will fuck you up. Like, right. there's a force coming. All right. <clears throat> yeah, let me look at this map again. Right. Yeah. I got a couple more questions. Am I out of character? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, and I, I'm sure you said this before, and I may have missed it. The, the red section is the junk wall. No, the red section is just the area beyond the wall. I see. That's, okay. And it's been yeah, again. Right, that's what it was. The, the clear, near, far. To be clear, it's the shoot them as they come in zones. Gotcha. I, I divided to areas to make. I'm it sorry. Easier. I'm gonna need Grover to come explain to me what's near and what's far. <laughs> uh, Again, you put that joke in the fucking rule book. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Uh, look, oh, one my... more question. Sorry. Yeah, go. <laughs> this was the other thing I want to know. The steep hill, is that slanting towards us or away from us? So the highway, like a lot of places in Texas, yeah. is up a bit. Yes. So if you look where the drainage ditch is and where you get the, it's got the go on to the fear that comes up onto the road, that's all going up. So that hill kind of goes up to where the rise, where the built up highway was. And then below, again, a very common Texas thing, you get the drainage ditch. Because without it, you get a lot of like occasional flooding of the highway. Okay. Mm, um, all right. 
Um, the, and the, the breaks between the red is just so that we know which section we're talking about? They are an abstraction to help us more easily. Okay. I'll be able to point and go, look, the northern sector is being overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I, I would really like to take my goblin force down uh, uh, to the, what is this, the southwest? <laughs> Bad with well, directions. We, we don't want to go outside the fencing, right? Uh, the, so, you, by the way. so here's 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 a question. <laughs> um, oh, fearless leader. <laughs> uh, me personally, and my my peeps, we're really good close up. Mm -hmm. You know, you give us a face, a hamstring, gut punch. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, so either we're going to sit back and twiddle our thumbs or we can figure out if, uh, you know, we can at least take some out unboring, like. I see. So Dufer uh, looks over at Grendel. It doesn't have it on my character sheet, but I assume I still speak Kudge. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> and I just like because I haven't even like noted like said anything to him yet. And I'll just be like in cudge, be like, hey, what's up? War. Am I right? War. War war is up. And we will hopefully still be up after war. And they will be down in in the ground, under the ground, where we have put them after the war. Well, Which all took three words in catch. Right. <laughs> so um, before you have, when you came up, before you arrived, they had some people that were out on patrol. It's up to you whether you want to have some patrols scouting to figure out where people are coming from. Also, like you said, you could take those silver ones and put them someplace like near the overgrown park or the drainage ditch where they could hide and be like, surprise, shank, 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 shank. Right. I see. There's a, over oh, I see overgrown park. Similarly, for example, okay. you could put units of people that can shoot in the bombed out strip mall and fire right. back into the- into Towards. The right. yeah. So we can catch them in the middle. Yeah. And that's all up to you. It's up to you, up to you where you want to put people. So I, I don't think they're going to, um, they're not going to make for the drainage ditch right away because we've made that like super difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're probably likely to try and come up the hill and they're definitely going to try to come at us from the highway and for the certain. park. Um, the question is what's coming? Well, I think they're going to use the steep hill to their advantage and roll something down on us or multiple things or use it uh to speed up a vehicle to try and smash the fence so that's definitely one of our weak points yeah, obviously yeah. the two gates as well um they can use the overgrown park as cover to get close to the walls before making a rush but they won't be able to come in there with vehicles i think your idea of placing your uh goblins in that area is insightful uh and might have the best results for ambushing the ambushers so what i'm thinking out of character um it uh is putting my skirmishers uh over uh the overgrown park area uh -huh. right like over here mm -hmm. and then putting the raiders down uh here at the steep hill So, I mean, as long as they're not like, like they're just ready. They're here kind of as I can stack them, right? Let's yep. call them. So like that, yeah, if anybody's deciding to try and clear this area and then make a run, that they're there to attack it, not stand there in the middle of rolling pitch barrels. Right. Huh. <laughs> I'm wondering if um, maybe if we moved you off towards the drainage ditch side for cover, and then we put something more ostentatious there. That, like, 
you then you could sweep in from behind and get some like mm. nice goblin-y backstabby stuff. Okay. Oh, like to come in, come in from the north. Yeah. yeah. And then we like place some some more significant troops in that area. All right. Cause these guys can attack. So my skirmishers over uh in the park, they've only got close, right? Yeah. And then these guys can do near and far also. Yeah. So they could be in the trees. They could be, yeah. Right. So they can they can do some distance stuff. The other guys can't at all. Who's got this the the silver with the spears that that's uh that's me, I think. These are the um, militia. Yep. Um, so this is like close combat um citizenry of, of Bastion, not the yep. n- not the ones with um uh ranged weapons. So yep. we could put these guys here as something of a both a bulwark and also something of an inviting target right so that this is like an invitation almost for these uh goblins and uh other units of uh militia to kind of come down uh from here if they come down the hill i like that plan yeah i have a question sure sure do we have like the ability, like walkie talkies or anything like that to communicate with each other? Yeah, we have crappy little kid walkie talkies. Yeah, you know, we just, you just got in the last episode. <laughs> you do have them. I missed so, the walkie talkie. It was probably while I was having a bio break. While you're you're having this conversation, I think you're pulling open those terrible clamshells, <laughs> taking out the, it was some terrible, it was like commander combat right. communicator, right? It was kid kid something communicator, but it was with a K. Captain Kid Communicator. Captain Kid like, Communicator. <laughs> it was with C's. It wasn't with K's. They're not that dumb. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it was it's Captain and K for Kid, but yeah. Um, all right, I'm just gonna. Can, do you mind if I just move stuff around and then we can talk about? Yeah, it? we can. Go for it. Go for I have it. another question. Yeah, please. Yeah, Is there like a PA system? Uh. I believe that uh, because one up. Okay, because so I was talk. like, I'm pretty sure I remember there being the ability to like play music. Yeah. So you can check that. Unfortunately, if I recall, uh, it is in and near the keep. It doesn't really reach all. It so it doesn't. You don't quite have, um, you know, Stalag 17 style like take a microphone announcements to the camp going on. Right. Are they really close to the keep will hear it. Okay, so I think like while we're all kind of like in the keep, like discussing what like sitting over the battle map, like discussing mm-hmm. stuff, I'm gonna like pass off a disc and be like, play this <laughs> when we leave. Play, play my, play my sweet jams. And y'all know because y'all have traveled with Tufer that she loves her ska and reggae mixes. It's so. true. <laughs> so it is about the war and the ranking and the yeah. skanking. <laughs> there we go so are we trying to keep all these teams together like all don't, of, you don't i don't think we have, have to. to we don't have to so i think having like the battalions intermixed with each other like a yeah. good mix of skills so that okay. like yeah to like further, I mean, to further confuse uh people like poor jordan who volunteered <laughs> to role play and suddenly i had all kinds of game mechanics for the poor guy Less. um every turn a a uh, character unit can add a die to an adjacent military unit. Okay. So if you're present on the battlefield, you can make a unit better. All right. And clearly, and this is implied, but has not been said explicitly, S- obviously, and those who understand the battle days of Palladium role play and mega damage, He's- <laughs> you know, that the a army, does, no, older. The army does damage on a different scale than a person does. Right. Right. So if you open fire with your weapons, you can absolutely affect the enemy, but you won't be doing the same kind of hits the military as well. Make sense? Yep. Yep. Cool. All cool. Right. So uh the uh the, these kind of gold ones here, that's uh the those are the knights of Torg. Yeah. Uh yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's here's my plan. Okay. <laughs> I know we were supposed to roll play through this, but this is a lot faster. Um, <laughs> well, that's it's totally fine. But now, but now you can be in. But it's form. a great plan. Tell us about it. Is it? Um, so uh, the um, uh, 
Weavers and Maulers are going to be in vehicles patrolling so that they can get to places to back up uh, if there's like a weak point um, because they are kind of like shock troops and they make a, you know, they can be effective either reinforcing or getting somewhere fast to become offense. Um, the main, I guess there's kind of a main gate. We can put a couple of skirmishers and then the Knights of Torg there to really blockade that up. Mm -hmm. We'll have to fill this one in with some other folks. I really think this is going to be the, um, where they're going to try to think they're clever. And we've got that backed up. Um, yeah, I think this is the way to do it. And so then we're we leaving, we're leaving kind of the, the north a little. It um, is a little weak there. Um, it does feel like we could swing in, like, swing we, these units up pretty quickly okay right? like the field of vision on the north is pretty open mm -hmm. and it seems like we could swing these guys around pretty quick if that's where it's coming from whereas like i feel like if we're not by the ditch or the hill um it's like suddenly you could just be behind you know what i mean so okay. do you want all those six units that are near the secondary gate to be essentially on or near the walls in that area so not like their tokens look. So that second group. Yeah. Of, so more like they're actually like. Uh, yeah, we don't have to physically do that because it's going right. to be awkward. But yeah, we can say that they're up on those walls mm -hmm. if you want, because then you're right. You can actually obviously attack north as easy as you can attack. You defend the gate. Right. Uh, another piece of uh, uh, kind of invisible business would be, I'm assuming the couple of NPC leaders that are with you that do exist. Uh, are in the keep helping keep the non-combatants safe and that you're not allowing the non-combatants onto the field even if they could do non-combatant helping stuff for now i'm assuming get inside right yeah yeah okay let me know if that changes because you've got uh, 50 to 100 especially with the new goblins that came in of non-combatant like just people that'll be inside that little mini mall thing uh we should also in case everything goes to hell and we lose real bad we should set up a, a, a rally point <laughs> somewhere uh, everybody who lives here knows the region fairly well yeah so you can pick something like uh the old water tower or something yeah all right that they all it, should we say that's to the northwest yeah sure all right, because it the is. The water tower over there. Say, yeah. say it is. Because it is. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so it looks like no one is going to try to do the snipe shooting back thing, right? We're going to just do full defensive except for the goblins? I, I think it's just a little too... Um, it's too risky. No, there's too much risk of crossfire there, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, it begins. Ooh. So, um, in about 10 minutes, you're literally yelling orders. So, it, it, the conversation we just had would be in physical real time if we were LARPing this in a ridiculous LARP park. Uh, people would be physically running in about that much time. Like, you six, get the fuck over. Like, it, it, right. I think it would take about that 10 minutes. We should try to go do this at a, at a Bucky's. I <laughs> the monkeys. That's gonna go over real great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they put a mask on him. That was that was the best. All right. Right. Uh -huh. um, so as soon as we all like do the okay, we've got the plan. Like you're going this way. You're gonna. I'm gonna shout to the back and be like, hit it. And. Uh, but what we hear is um, the traveling wolverines uh, into the line. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> I think because Eric would have schooled them, they would know to switch the tracks. <laughs> you end up with still the great choice, but you end up with mirror in the bathroom. I don't know that one. <laughs> Maybe a little better than end of the line. Um, and uh, as people get into these exact positions, you hear the buzzing, kind of a buzz, but also kind of a jet sound. And you look up, and there is a cluster of rockets 
heading into the area from overhead. Uh, oh, shoot. So, um, Goldwater, you can take a shot at one of them before it lands. Okay. It's going to be against a five, please. And you're going to need to get a success. Partial won't do it. Wow. They're Starting going, off fun. They're what going fast and they are like old tech. So they actually have, uh, they can evade. Ooh. I think you're going to be unhappy, Mike. <laughs> I got three successes. <laughs> well, they can't evade that. So he hears the noise and without even looking to confirm visually what they are, he swings <laughs> up. Uh, and by the way, where are you? Oh, you're by the front gate. Yeah, I decided to be with the folks that I'm, I'm interested And uh, are Grendel and Navad on the roof of the keep or is Navad in the keep? Um, I'm not in the keep. I'm going to, Navad's going to move himself here. Like, huh. I, I kind of want to shadow Goldwater a little bit. Okay, do that right now because I'm going to have to be doing. Yep, you got it. I yep. moved myself. Grendel, where are you going? Uh, I guess, um, Jesus, uh, unless Goldwater <laughs> gave me otherwise, uh, yeah, do we have Jesus here? Um, no, he's, he's somewhere he's, up, he's, up where north. We, we have his address. Uh, it's good. He's, <laughs> closer to, he's closer to, uh, to Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. He's near Houston. To go to Victoria. Um, I get, uh, geez. Hold on. Let me check. Sorry. Um, well, if I was going to this, of course, a... Jordan is not at all what Grendel sounds like, right? <laughs> what was that? I'm sure this is not what Grendel sounds like, because I love uh, a, a gentle Mr. Maxwell. I don't think Grendel's like, um, wait, huh? I'm yeah, sure. no, well, I'm not, I'm not, oh, well, I'm not doing my Grendel voice, yeah, so no, this no, is no, clearly me. Totally, right? So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this yeah is I'm me sure talking. Grendel is more like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be well, really great if in the heat of pitch battle right that's how he gets i don't know he's, a, he's <laughs> total uh, yeah he's he's uh, uh was it uh gilderoy uh, uh oh, lockhart. Yeah, yeah. From, from, yeah lockhart from uh from mary Potter. we're just like once the actual like everything has just been bs up to this point and he's just like uh uh uh, uh, uh. but yeah, no that's not what it's like that's what I'd be like. Better, but unless you have a better idea, I'd say you'd be in one of the vehicles because, again, that, that was be my yeah. a useful spot for you so you can get somewhere real fast and start. Yeah, I was going to be, I guess, here in the closest one to Perfect. the... Perfect. Uh, Navad, do you want to try to take out a rocket with uh, Devastate? Um, yeah, I guess so. That's I've never done anything like that before, so I think we'll give it a... He'll give it a whirl. Okay, so technically, the ability... I think it's Devastate. What's the one that destroys objects without causing damage? Uh, that is, uh, hold on. Uh, destroy. The, 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 that is destroy is on the inanimate object. So you could probably just wipe out like its tail fins and just right make it not work. So, but the problem is it's uh, it's an it's a spell that works at near. Oh yeah, that's no good. It's not a. I'm not. I don't have. I don't have good range. I'd have to like try to catch the missile. <laughs> no. And then, and then, and I don't think that's a good use of my magic. So I think the camera would just swing past the Bob looking up like, yeah, like I kind of well for that. I was like, kind of like, yeah, I'm flexing my hands. Like I could, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Somebody so reached out for an casting a shield, casting a shield, casting a shield. <laughs> Grendel, do you want to uh, unload with the minigun and try to take out a rocket? Yeah. Okay, well, um, are, are any of them close enough that I can use my new spray feature? You could. The only risk is it's more likely to jam if you fail. So sure. the way you do that is you're going to take away uh, a die for every target after the first. So if you want to take out three rockets, do a shoot two dice down. Okay. This is actually a perfect use of this feature. Um, let's, uh, let's give it a try. Let's just, let's, let's see um okay so i got a shoot of five so i'm gonna roll three yep to hit three and you would really love to get two successes two scores oh and i dropped one okay well that's first okay well i got two sixes so yes wow and you can re-roll them but it doesn't matter because anything over two is fine and, you do and i got a third damage. six on the re-roll oh <laughs> my god so damage yeah it's a three sixes is what i got yeah yeah, yeah. the ungodly uh, uh those things make an ungodly racket the the miniguns are just something else so uh you bring the lightning and the thunder and three of the things explode in the air uh good call i didn't even think about that uh twofer do you want to try to throw something at one of these 
I was going to ask what's nearby. All kinds of things. I mean, it's all, all kind- partially, uh, they've done things like put big things defensively to hide behind. So there's all kinds of shit in the area. Um, is there something, oh, I would love like a bit of like, like busted up concrete with rebar in it. Something that's uh, pick, pick one of the things that uh, is a hump in the road. All right. That's I exactly what they're putting there. You just pick it up and toss it. All right. So you're going to be throwing at close and you're going to yeah. go and uh, go ahead and give that roll. All right. Oh, I had a question. Are my bonuses for my robo arms already on my... No, because they're contextual. They can... Oh, okay. Because they're like, for example, it's only if this, only if that. So you have to kind of read them in as you go. As okay. far as the damage of the hurl ability, that's prefigured on your weapon summary. All right. I got two sixes. Okay. Don't worry about the damage on the rockets because they're fragile. If you hit them, they explode. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was great. So you that was five good. things are gone. Unfortunately, there were more than five. Mm. There were nine. So I'm going to need, uh, Shannon, you're going to be my Huckleberry. Roll a D6 for me. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I got a three. And then roll a D8 for me. Do you have a D8 or do I need someone else? I can get a D8. I have a D8. Oh, if you have a so D8 right a D8, there. D8, please. Got to have a D8. It's an eight. <laughs> uh, you could have had a V8. Yeah, you could have had, had a D8. God damn it, I forgot. <laughs> okay, boom. <laughs> Uh, I need a D6 for Mr. Maxwell. Okie doke. Five. And I need a D8 from Tanya. Another eight. Oh, my God. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> this seems bad. I know. It's going to go terribly wrong. It's, it's, you're rolling well for Mike, I think. Oh, crazy. I don't know. Maybe not. I know. <laughs> well, my, my goal is to end the game tonight. <laughs> so I, Let's I all go better, it. I've damaged one of the Knights of Torg. Uh, Mr. Tribe, may I have a D6, please? You sure can. <laughs> sure, why not? A four. All right. And uh, Tanya, D8, please. Oh, okay. Not, not an eight. Oh, my God. Well, it's an eight. Oh my God. <laughs> do you yeah, know, is it okay. one of those is it did you get one of those um all eights d8s yeah it's <laughs> eight on every side first death no. oh uh, no that rocket hits awfully close to this gate which means uh one of the defenders is actually dead and two of the other units are injured by the fire oh. So wait, wait that one's playing, fired. Sorry, timeout. Battleship with these dice. <laughs> <laughs> and let me have a D6 from uh, Shannon. Okay. I think it's battleship. Uh, <laughs> I rolled I rolled a six. Yeah, all right. And then a D8. A, a two would be hilarious, Tanya. Okay, I'm now going to my like very old school D8. Yeah. Oh, nice and worn down. I love it. <laughs> A one. There we go. <laughs> oh my god! All right, boom. Yeah, the two would have been right at that group of defenders. <laughs> <laughs> is battleship? It is battleship. I think so. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah your grouping is great, but remember, you took out five of these things. Yes. So this could have been much, much worse. Oh, Thank yeah. God for Grendel and his mini gun. <laughs> yeah. Good mm. job, Grendel. Yeah. Oh, I, I should have aimed for more. So uh, I'm going to now ask of the two leaders closest. So over here, I see um, Navad and uh, Goldwater are right where those two rockets fell and by the Knights of Tor. They didn't hit the fence. So they're kind of just. Uh, you know, like when the rocket hits and you get like the kind of burning crater. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's going to catch. So you're just going to let that burn? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. Okay. So over here by the one by the door, there's no leader over there. Uh, Grendel, you can come up on your cart there. To me, this is a bunch of people in like 
you know, a Paul Bart Blart kind of like guard, like buzzing around the clearing. Uh, but would you want them to try to put out those fires as a priority, or do you tell them to stand their ground? Um, let's see. Well, there, yeah. Uh, while we've got time, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them to go ahead and and put the fire out while we have time. Okay, so we're gonna put you over there to be ordering them to do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna move those figures, but we're gonna say that those. Uh, figures by the gate that are the settlers, so the the uh, the gold and the silver, right by the gate. They're not paying as close attention because they're going to put out the fire. So will you tell uh, your battalion, the other guy in the other car, that'll be get out and arm the wall? My understanding is that was part of the point, right? Is these guys are flexible. Yeah, because that that and that was why I think Goldwater had them in the vehicles so that they could get you, around and kind of troubleshoot. You could do that put him on the wall, then these guys put out that fire. Uh, and then you just kind of lead. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. And I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll back him up in case they decide like, you know, okay, that spot's weekend. They're going to come through there. I'm, I'll be standing by to perfect fight uh, anyone who comes through. <laughs> now I'm going to need a, uh, and this is going to happen from time to time, and to both the players and uh, whatever audience stop by to say hello. Sometimes in Nuked, when you have something that doesn't have a relevant skill attached to it, you'll make a, a test just with dice. They're not connected to attributes. So the GM will assign for three to five dice. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say that because uh, there's a character there, Twofer, give me a notice check, please. Do I notice anything? I got a six and a four. Uh, the difficulty was a four, so that's two successes. Reroll the six to see if you get another one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so you get an exceptional success. There you go. So, <laughs> next bit of business. When I put one of these on the field, so you know how in uh, Aliens, you just had the beep on the tracker? You didn't know what the hell that was, just as there was a beep? Right. Yeah. The little skinhead mohawk dudes are, are the beep. So you don't know exactly what there are, just their opponents, and you haven't identified the type or exact number yet. And this will be used throughout this conflict to indicate that. Point being, your squad realizes that you're being approached by another group. Will you send scouts? Will you scout yourself? Or do you tell them to hold their positions? I'm going to send one. Uh, what have I got? Skirm what? skirmishers huh? one one skirmisher to try and get a closer look because we're in tall grass right yes yeah uh one skirmisher uh and i'm gonna go ahead and get on the the walkie which i'm sure has got a great like 20 foot right. radius and i'm hoping you, go ahead and put your hand over your mouth on top of hello? Uh, hello it's twofer the goblin hello? yeah it's okay. um we've got uh some uh Enemies approaching from the west. Uh, more to come. Okay, bye. So I have swapped out the type because you're able to identify that they have three rocket launchers. Cool. All right. So my goblin has come back with this news. He comes back. Rocket launchers. Rocket, All right. Rocket. Um, bad news. Uh, rocket launchers. So they're currently at far range. Okay. Quietly, they're kind of crouched down. So they're you're doing the same thing at each other, right? You've got right. You got is so, but they don't seem like they've noticed us at all, right? He doesn't know. Okay. And they're not close enough yet that you'll get a general sense. I would like sense. two and two, so two skirmishers and a skirmisher and me to kind of quietly flank through the grass and see if we can't get behind them so you're going to try to let them pass a little and then attack them at from the back yeah and you want to get into near or do you want to go all the way to close so you're going to charge them uh we get, we've only got a close is our close is our thing okay. i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna wow i almost said something really bad hey good thing you didn't i no i didn't i i'm yourself. Myself. 
a mental chocolate for that. It's called Yay! it's called growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna need uh, Tanya, the player, uh, yep. to make a three die test. Let me know what you get. It's gonna be against a four. Uh, I got two fives. Okay, that's success. Uh, and that means you're gonna get what you want. You're going to be able to charge in. So at this point, uh, I'm you're going to roll. This will be the first military combat attack. They're all the same type of unit. This is what I meant by the handful of dice. So these are your skirmishers, which means at this range, uh, none of them are wounded. So that's 12 dice. Uh, they're going to get a score on a four or better. Remember, okay, you get 12, extra, you right, get 12 dice, dice four extra, or better. You get an extra die for you. So roll oh. 13 dice, four or better. Four or better. All right, got it. One, two. Woohoo! Two, four. Seven. Seven. No. Seven, six. Yeah, seven fours or better. Beautiful. Let me check my numbers on those. That's that. Uh, you blow them away. Yeah. All right. right. Now you have, uh, well, you have giant. Let me get rid of that. Whoa. Look at the rocket launcher. I mean, they're small. They they're so big. That small. <laughs> so, do, you, do you take the rocket launchers? Goblins, not picks. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I take you let the rest of the people know what happened. Uh, yeah. I'm like, Ahem. new news. Uh, we have the rocket launchers. <laughs> and, and by the way, that was about uh, 18 goblins against maybe seven uh, thugs with that were fairly well equipped. So you basically jumped out and, and we would get... We seat. basically learned, we learned to fight Curse's dudes when they tried to take over our yeah. city. And we're going with the exact same tactic, the shock and all. So I, I need another notice test from uh, two for place. All right. Uh, two sixes and a four. Wow. That's so Y'all, cool. eventually these dice are going to start sucking so hard. Yeah. Roll those sixes. Oh, God. Nope. Nope. Okay. Neither, they were both threes. Okay, so you are going to realize that there are more forces coming from that same direction. And you've known enough about this kind of fighting to know. It looks to you like they were intending to open up the wall with the rocket launchers. And Whoever's then send coming, we go through that hole, right? Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to make a couple of small changes. So nothing that's a big movement, but small moves, because I assume you're going to tell them that this is happening. So you have just uh, yep. enough time while I go to the bathroom to make your changes. Go! Ha! Ah, okay. All right. Ha! All right. Um, yeah. If we could get some people over here who can use rocket launchers, that would be great. Uh, anybody, anybody know how to use these things? Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to ask Mike is like, once you get a hold of the rocket launchers, do your stats change? Uh, right. <laughs> oh, do, for the teams? Yeah. Because now they have rocket launchers. So like, they're equipped differently. Right. I don't know if they can or can't use them, but that right. would affect where I'd like to put them. Right. Because right. um, honestly, if I had my my choice, I'd read, I'd send you guys up to the strip mall. Right. So here's the thing. I'm going to guess no. And here's why. They're skirmishers. So them like me do best close up. So if we could pass these off to somebody who can do near who car have, who, who like who already it? has weapons training um i can I, send i mean i can send reavers my reavers are my uh my range attackers so i can maybe send uh, either one or both uh units which one which one are they there's the a blue guys the blue um uh hell's angels -y looking okay so in. maybe uh I'll send like two guys kind of back here, halfway point, kind of meet up, trade off, right? Okay. 
I know um, like you're doing no. all this out of character. I think it's faster, which is fine. I know. Uh, I <laughs> I have thoughts. Uh, okay. I like where this is going, but um, I think so. They're gonna the whatever whoever's next is going to expect the fence to be down, right? right. Or they're going to be waiting for something to tell them the fence is down, like an explosion. Right. Um, but I also think it's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be, you know, they're the, they're the, they're the, the, you know, breach the wall party, right? They're like the shock troops coming through berserkers or something. So I'm (laughs) so. Well, we had a question. We do have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Before we make a choice. Um, so not for me because I, I don't use guns. Don't know how to do that. Does do the skirmisher stats change, or do we need to pass these off to people who do know how to use weapons? So the nice thing about rocket launchers uh, and uh, is they're not hard to use, right? So uh-huh. when you decide to use them, they are. I'll, I'll shoot once; they're gone. Resource. Let me know, and I will tell you what to do. Okay. Um. Okay. If if that's the case, if I can use them because I'm heavy. So it's not like it's gonna like rock me back or anything. You take one and do you hand off the other two or you just have I would like to hand off two because there's your ravagers are like right behind us in this truck, right? Right here. They can pull up to the fence. Right. I think we could hand two off to to the ravagers. And I've got one. The problem with that is they're on the other side of the fence. Oh, yeah. right. They have to go to the main gate, have them open the gate, come through and come around. All right. Just chuck it. Wait, I can throw shit. Throw them. <laughs> well, I can. Um, uh, what I can also do is if they're coming that way, uh, we can have, um, we'll still have uh, the Reavers come here up to the fence. And then, because y'all have three shots with those rocket launchers. Mm-hmm. And then, so basically, like, if we're opening fire into that oncoming horde onto the, uh, who are... And Jordan, if you want to pass the unit through the gate by having them go through, you would have gaps that you would make that you could open or they could go over the top. They're just not going to be able to drive through it. So if you want to do this kind of shit, you can. Well, my idea of, I think my idea will work either way, is that, you know, we, we have the opening bombardment of the three rockets, and then... Basically, because it's, you know, you know, goblins are, we, you know, basically drop back into the grass and then my guys can just open fire into. Okay. So we can, that's what I was kind of thinking is we could shoot off these rockets and go back to hiding. So they're going to just know yeah. damage came and they're still not going to have and clocked that there's four fighters there. Right now, at this point, you uh-huh. see what is approaching. You see... I don't like when new stuff shows up. What? Mm-hmm. A Pokeball. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a master ball. Thank you. Thank you. I know. Mike's still mad at me for like calling a table a bristle block. Right. <laughs> All right. So what's approaching is um, like a delivery van that's been extra heavily armored. Okay. On the front. Uh, and Ursa's cow catcher. So there's like a lot of metal been applied to the front. Uh, it's been outfitted with big knobby tires. Uh, and it looks like it would be a bitch to get into, right? Like it, it's possible even they come in from underneath because you don't think those doors open, which means there's a hatch on the bottom of it. So it's basically like a turtle. So I super heavily it. armored. <laughs> so on either side of it, sort of acting as an escort, uh, is a unit of three motorcycles. So do you do you suggest to your... I suggest two rockets for the tank van. Okay. And one for the motorcycles. Okay, so go ahead and roll uh, four dice against a three for damage to the tank van. Okay. Three, five, or six. Okay, remember we roll sixes. So the five and the six are going to score. Okay, so I re rolled that one twice, so that's five. Yeah. Okay, so did you, did you get how many total scores? Five. Wow. Okay. So that doesn't destroy it, but you certainly damage it. And <laughs> one is going to attack motorcycles. Uh, go ahead and roll 
Uh, two dice against a three. Three. Yep. Double twos. <laughs> okay. So unfortunately, the motorcycles are fairly agile. Is the point now to hide, to go, for, including you, to just yep. any, possibly even kind of dive away? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like, nope out and just fucking. We do what goblins do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to need a uh, five die roll from you against a four. Okay. How well this pays off for you. I really should have got my champion's dice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I warned you and shit. Oops. You can tell I was watching uh, Kevin Smith earlier. Mm-hmm. Suddenly mm-hmm. and shit just into my Bye. language. <laughs> five total. Uh, five? Wow. Okay. So uh, one of these units is red. So they're on just one motorcycle on that side. And, uh, oh, no, no, there was an attack. That was a do you yeah. see hiding? Which oh. Is Five is great. So yeah. they do not stop to engage with the goblins, which is what you wanted. Right. However, this means this unit up here, which is going to be, uh, was that Reavers, Jordan? Uh, yeah, it should be. Okay. So you're going to shoot. Do you want to shoot them? Uh, well, they're moving fast. They're going to come into far right away. So uh, do you want to concentrate on that truck? Uh, yeah, I think the truck is the, the main threat. Um, so go ahead. The fence. And uh, go ahead and roll your attack. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay, okay, so, so that's going to be the third range category. So okay. four dice, four better hits okay uh that's uh only one score i got a, i got a i got a four and then you my everything, dice everything else is <laughs> <under that. laughs> i'm gonna package some dice up for you Pass on, Randall. You're right here. eat this eat it yeah, that's for you <laughs> It, it, it ain't the dice, it's the man rolling them. <laughs> Trust me, I, I do not roll well, typically. I troll. At this point, uh, the motorcycles do this. You can't see gestures because I'm not in the window. Um, they go f- to the two sides, and the van continues until it <laughs> explodes in contact with the wall. Um, so there is a massive explosion, takes out that van, takes out that unit entirely, takes out that vehicle, takes out a section of wall and a couple of those buildings. It was supposed to be worse though, because they were supposed to blow up the fence and it was supposed to get inside. Correct. But... Like that probably was directed to go in on the keep. I feel like is that truck like now it's stopped. It's now part of our defense now. <laughs> it is on fire in a hole. It's in the a wall. big <laughs> smoldering, yeah. Smoldering ah. hole there. So um does anyone react move do anything i would like to pick up a giant tire and throw it at one of the motorcycles okay um do you want to do that or do you want to help this the group that you're with make a group attack and uncomfortably end up being a leader um okay we we could do a group attack so i think uh narratively we see her pick up the tire and then kind of put it down and start giving commands. <laughs> uh, so go and make your attack against the motorcycle. All right. Uh, is it's going to be a close range relative to you. Is it four dice? Or uh, how many? 13 again? And this is, oh yeah, you have to wait for them to be close, right? Yeah. That's why I was thinking I'm, I'm going to hurl something. So that might be the best chance you have if okay. they don't come back around. Right. Uh, All right. Go ahead and make your hurl. Again, this is going to be at close range. Okay. So, oh, I forgot my hurl is beefy. Hang on. All right. And I'm at close. <laughs> my hurl is beefy. Oh, I can't do it at close. You have to wait for them to be further away? Well, that's fine. Yeah, I have to wait for them to be in the near range. So, I'll hold. So, over here, 
these people are all waiting for a chance to shoot. Um, so they can all take a shot. So um, I think the knights would go first. So sure. you're going to roll all the dice together, um, which is going to give you 12 dice. And that's going to be at close range as they swing around. Uh, so you're going to, well, you probably want to wait for them to get a little further away because you get a better chance. They want close. So the 12 against the three are better. Okay. So you can blow away the motorcycles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do I reroll sixes? Yep. Okay. So I have six. I'm going to reroll two sixes. And so eight, because I got two more. What? So eight. Okay. So that's going to take that thing red, which means it's going to have less uh, points mm -hmm. if it attacks. So two of the motorcycles are destroyed. The other one is speeding away. Uh, this group is pulling away here. Uh, and I, at this point, are the goblins just lying in wait for anyone to get close, or do you move position? Um, I'm just going to have them lay in wait, but as soon as that motorcycle is at a distance where I can hurl... Uh, Go ahead and take your shot. I'd like to take it out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, there's only one left. You could probably tag off that remaining one on that side. Yeah. Dude, they're going to hurl. <laughs> I'm going to hurl. <laughs> What's wait? What's the difficulty on this one? Oh wait, you just told me it's we're at near, right? Uh, you'll you'll be, yeah, you'll be at near as it goes by. Yeah, if you don't if you don't make it, contact, it's just a dry heave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got three 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 there three successes. Okay, so the second that unit is destroyed. Okay, cool. What? This motorcycle leaves the map. <laughs> Wait a minute. Right. Rubber. <laughs> so what's clearly obvious to Nevada, who's closest there, um, you can certainly see it, Goldwater. Uh, Twofer, you can see it from where you're at. That whole section is on fire. Buildings are burning. Right. Uh, the fence is burning. That will need to be put out or it will spread. Buildings burning. Uh... People screaming. So unless you pull people out from the keep. Looks or... on character sheet for firefighting. <laughs> you, would, you ideally would want militia to go in and bucket yeah. brigade and take them out. Yeah, I I kind of think that the militia down here with the knights yeah. could swing up there and do that. Okay. Um, do you give that command, Goldwater? I do. Go, 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 go. Put out that fire. <laughs> fire okay uh, tribe you've been waiting to yell go 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 haven't you go 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 put on the fire <laughs> go go everybody go put on the fire <laughs> at this point you hear another buzzing jet sound oh is it exactly the same as last time it is another barrage of missiles mm. uh, the only right. person here Although Grendel has significantly more combat experience, Goldwater has studied a lot of old stuff. Yeah. I think you would know that there are some old vehicles that fire clusters of nine. Yes. And this looks like another unloading of that payload. Um, and they're all coming from the same direction, I assume, because they're attached to the vehicle. Coming from the uh, map east, which is the direction where it says drainage ditch, like off that way but like half a mile i think we should take out that vehicle yeah uh so gold warrior you gonna take a shot at one as it comes in yeah uh do you want to do anything fancy like i think you've got double shot do you want to try to get two mm, uh, let's see you were talking to me right yes <laughs> Let's use none of these are gonna fit. Um, but I need to remember <laughs> that I have uh, your sure shot may come in handy here. Yes. So I will keep in mind that I have sure shot three. You probably want to get uh, Grendel to teach you spray. 
for your SMG. But yeah. You know, okay, so go ahead and do a shoot. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, you stole my joke. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's five dice. Let's see how I do. I did really well last time. Yes, you did. Do it again. We know it is. What's my difficulty? Uh, whatever it says on far for your weapon. Oh, far, 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 far. Far is a three. So three or better. Oh, that's really good because it turned into four successes. <laughs> so that missile blows up. You take one out. Uh, Nevada figured out is at the wrong range for this. Um, yep. Two for, are you going to try to throw something? Do you have I think it's, is it? I think it's too far away for me. Well, it would have to it's be too far. Because uh, it's on the other side of the map for me, right? Well, they're going to be coming in at various points over the map. If you get attack at far, you can give it a shot. Okay, then I will give it a shot because far is what my hurl is for. So you pick up the uh, burning right? nope. of one of the motorcycles. Yep. You, your, your retro bionics uh, kick into gear and you throw that shit. One push. Two. Uh, three three successes okay another one explodes wow maxwell do you want to see if you can pull that off again or do you want to take less risk and maybe just do two or more risk and do four the world is your oyster <laughs> um, not, not exactly i've never been much of one for bivalves but uh yeah i'll do i'll do the uh i'll, I'll do i'll do the thing i did before i'd have to change my whole okay cupid profile yeah <laughs> Not one for bivalves. No, bivalves welcome over here. No. All the They'll bivalves kill me, so keep them away from me. So two sixes. All right, and that was with the extra, just like last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so those were the, okay. So uh, yeah, but uh, it's just the two sixes because I didn't get anything on my next. Uh, I don't need, think anyway. You only need to succeed, so that's three yeah. more down, which means the same as last time. So Jordan, give me a d six, please. Another five. Same as last time. Oh, yeah. Give me a D8, please. Uh, you. <clears throat> two. Wasn't two oh. what I was not supposed to be rolling? <laughs> oh, dear. I think all my, uh, all my Torgs just died. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Torgs. <laughs> and then uh, Barrett, give me a D6. Three. And give me a D8, Tanya. Three. At least it's hitting someplace new. Yeah. <laughs> uh, six from uh, Shannon, please. Okay. Four. Okay, and a D8 from Tanya. Two. Okay, roll. Uh, 3d6 for me, Tanya, against uh, four. Let me know how many successes you have. Two. Okay. So a couple of your, your goblins have taken damage. Oh, no. And uh, one more d6 from Jordan. Uh, it on the tray. Oh, Five, again. What? <laughs> Nice, These nice grouping from the enemy. And a D from Tanya. A two would be terrible. Three. So. All right. That's going to be another dead unit. Oh, no. And some more damage. Yeah. All right. Um, that's what it looks like after the rocket barrage hits. Uh, does anyone give any orders at this point? Yes. <laughs> Listen to Goldwater. Grendel, that that those rockets are eating us alive. They have a rocket tank or some vehicle out there. I need you to go and take it out. Okay. Uh, I. Uh, do you want to take? Do you want to take my goblins? We need the vehicles. We got to go fast. Let's go. Okay. I'll take all your, all your vehicles and go. You want to take the three vehicles up here and uh, your mercenaries and take all those out? 
Uh, if that's what Goldwater has commanded us to do, then yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Reba Smallers, roll out. All right. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> this reminds me of a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, two Kim points, just like a movie. Two points the, uh, Ryan George there. <laughs> I love a good movie. What's the name of the movie? What's the name of the movie about people in the cars driving around? Cannonball Run. Exactly. <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, uh, Grindel, you're obviously in charge of that unit. You want to go the direction the rockets have been coming from, right? Yes. Okay. Um, great. They speed up. So I'm going to put you uh, off the map a little bit. Get out of here, Jordan. Get out of here. Get out of here with your with your reavers <laughs> and, your, and, your, and your good hair and your <laughs> bad attitude and, and uh, your head bread. Your head bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like little like little biscuits. I earned these. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna, I need to roll some dice. They tried to wake, take away my French bread. They wound up French dead. <laughs> I don't oh. know what French dead is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ooh la la. I don't uh-huh. know. I saw Les Mis. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dead French people in that. A lot of dead French A people. Lot A lot of dead, of dead French, French people. people. <laughs> like all the dead French people. Yeah. They put them all in one place. Yeah, let's see. So the militia. The catacomb. Oh. <laughs> Reddit 2, uh, I think they're also Reddit 2, right? Yes, they are. So all of these units are injured. And one is dead. So what happens at this point is there is a bunch of gunfire coming from the direction of the bombed out strip mall. Oh, God. And oh, no. Our over, weak point. Over by the rear gate, uh, an entire unit of militia dies. And there's a bunch of damage to the other people at that gate, uh, some of whom presumably have gone over to try to put out some of this fire. I'm also going to assume, because that was a general order you were giving, that where it's burning, the militia's first job is... Put that out. The burning. Put that right? out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, at this point, the closest person to know that's going on uh, is Navad. Okay. Uh, Navad, are you on the ground or are you on the roof? Um, I was on the ground. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you heard the screaming. Yeah. They were on the corner, and you can tell what's happening. They have gone into, like, the second and third stories of the, what what's left of the bombed out area. Uh-huh. They've taken up, effectively, sniper firing positions. Okay. They are pot-shotting at everyone this side of your defense. Uh, from the strip mall? Yep. Okay. Crap. Yeah, it's distant, but distant is not impossible. Right. They probably have rifles. Right. Which is uh, further than my uh, than my defender guys can shoot, right? Right. I think they so. They can shoot it far, but they don't, they don't have weapons that are far enough for that. Knights of Torg can go that far. Uh, the Reavers that just left can go that far. Yeah, whoops. Uh, I think that's it. Um, okay, I gotta tell. I gotta tell. If I'm still in com range. I can. I can send a unit back if. Uh, if I'm still in com range and you want me to. Well, I'm gonna get actually, on and and let. Actually, not because we established okay. the com range was. Uh, remember in the mid '80s where you got like walkie-talkie and you went out with your your brother, or your cousin, and it yep. didn't go even a half a block until yep. the thing was useless. And I never went outside as a child, so. Oh. What? what? That's what it was like, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Not being able to communicate with your friends once they reached the fifth house. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. So, Navad, you kind of do that calculus. Right. Would, I've uh, got to let, I'm letting Goldwater know that we're massively exposed on the north because of the strip mall. <laughs> um, I cough. <laughs> Because of all the fire. You're right. Smoke is inhaling smoke. 
two for a see if you can swing your goblins up there uh, from the north west uh, and take them from the side. Try to flank right here. Try to flank him is what I'm saying. Try to flank him. I got flank. So what you're saying is in Kudge we say flank. Flank him. All right. It's a basic pincer maneuver. (laughs) Do you want to tell the militia to get the hell away from the north side of the combom? Yeah, I want him to fall back in uh, like closer uh, down. We did want to go in the keep and just get out of line of fire completely. Uh, Which ones? The ones that are red will only be doing two dice on attack because they're wounded. Yeah. Do you want them to pull the wounded back inside the keep or do you want them out on the battlefield? I want them on the battle. I think they should be on the battlefield, um, but like... They can the condos. Pardon? Yeah, yeah the pull condos. them back a little bit further and they won't be shooted like back to the dog park. Yeah, should- yeah, exactly. This is kind of... These guys are working on the fire, but these guys, I want them back. So there is a slight chance they're going to be able to get some of the people working on the fire because there is in line to be able to shoot but yeah those guys you can definitely get out of the way okay so i'm gonna need a uh three die test against a four from twofer to see if you can sneak up now there's a th- decision you're gonna have to make here about speed versus stealth right right like are you kind of like crouch jonking or are you belly crawling or are you fuck it running like what's your speed like um, I think that we're booking it as long as we've got cover. Okay. So uh, like, and more than stealth, you're running from obstacle to obstacle. Right. Okay. So go ahead and give me uh, three dice against a four. Okay. One five. Marshall. Well, so here's the positive thing that happens. They see you coming. And with a partial success, they're going to be able to shoot. I'm down to die because you're making it hard to shoot you. The positive thing is we're not going to be able to keep pot shotting those settlers that are putting out that damn fire. Right. Which is a, a, a good thing. On the other hand. Yay, we drew fire. Oh, we drew fire. Uh, one of your units is gone. Oh, no. Uh, over here, this the guys. <laughs> is reduced quite a bit but it's not put out yet i was like what's a good goblin name and like the only thing that popped in my head was becky i was like no okay fine what what do you mean that's actually i think an amazing goblin name (laughs) becky with the goblin hair yeah so you see the illustration of the goblin in the book that's a becky that's that's true (laughs) uh all right cool so you're about halfway there. You've either got to slow down to do stealth or you're going to have to balls out to hit the buildings. Uh, and- we're goblins, sir. We're going to balls out it. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm assuming with goblins, we're talking like Tanuki style. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. And so there's a lot ahead. of like shouting incoherently. So go ahead and, uh, oh, okay. Thanks, Colt. Um, so go ahead and give me another uh, four die check against a four. You can get two successes, you get to the strip mall. Four and a five. You do. So you're now hunting in the strip mall. Ooh. Yeah. While that's going on, I love uh, it. A bunch of vehicles are racing that direction. My my like high school paintball self is like, yeah. This is what, this is what all that training was for. Field. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of like the big plastic traffic barriers <laughs> yeah. that have been spray painted with bad nuclear symbols and skulls. Yep, that's what I'm picturing. <laughs> and things that are unnecessarily fluorescent. Yes. And uh, splatter, splatter paint. Notice check from you, sir. Is that from Grendel? Ah, Grendel. Oh, okay. Sorry. There was multiple voices. Uh, notice you said there are pills for that, Jordan. <laughs> so many. Uh, I live. I live my life natural. <laughs> Look, thank God that's not my policy. And what am I? Uh, what am I trying to beat? Okay, so you're uh, the difficulty is a speeding vehicle is a five. So okay. you're gonna want any die that scores a five or better is gonna score. 
So let me know okay. how many dice. None. Okay. Oh. So now I need an awareness check. Awareness is basically danger sense. It's when you're about to get fucked up, you know it's about to happen. This is against a four. All right, I got a six. That's a tray. Uh, I got a six, uh, so uh, partial. Okay. Uh, one, one score, sorry. Now give me a reaction set. And one score is a partial. That was actually the exact right terminology. That's what, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be better about that. Oh, no, you're great. Where is a... Uh, uh, on in the middle of a revision, the fact that you're you're completely keeping up is totally fine. Uh, that's under your saves of the left yeah. hand side. It's, uh, so it's, I've got a three on that. Okay, and you're going to be going with that four here? Nope, nothing. Are you a lead from the front guy or a lead from the back guy? Um, so in my mind, I was, um, since we're down, uh, one of our reaver units and yeah. we were kind of like charging in at the thing, like I wanted to have our, uh, range guy up front yeah. with the, the maulers in the back. And then I was going to be up with the, uh, up in the front with the range so that I could use the minigun. So yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be leading from the front, I suppose, is my long winded. Okay. So, um, that. What's the movie where Iron Man uh, is in blackface shooting a pretend movie? Tropic oh, Thunder uh, is what you're uh, thinking uh, of. Then. Tropic oh, Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a whole season of Iron Man I didn't watch. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird one. It's a real strange season of Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you putting blackface on your armor? Shut up, man. What? It's a thing you gotta do. <laughs> Uh, what is, why, why is Iron Man cosplaying as Charlie Chaplin in this movie? I don't understand. Yikes. <laughs> you know the scene where they set off uh, the explosives? Mm-hmm. And he basically, yes. in the movie, they waste them. But it's, I think he was actually inspired by the ones from, uh, oh God, Ride of the Valkyries. Um, uh, Apocalypse Now? I've only got half a movie reference. Yes, Apocalypse Now. So it's like the poof, 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 like that. Uh, that happens to you. Okay. So as you are trying to jump off your <laughs> off the back of the truck probably cursing to yourself about you know slow old man stupid old man or some version of that you would realize it didn't move between volleys which is very bad military strategy unless you're trying to draw someone to that location because it was a pause between volleys if it's a mobile unit you'd shoot move shoot so the fact that it didn't move means they wanted you to come this way. So as you, in fact, do go this way, you realize they set demo charges. The demo charges destroy the vehicle. Uh-oh. And the front unit is gone. And you take 12 hits and a wound. Um... I do not take a wound. Oh, you're going to do the uh, shrug off the wound thing? Uh, yeah, D- defy wounds is uh, <laughs> is the defy applicable feat. Uh, yeah, so, psh, no, uh, I'm not wounded. Not um, today, and I get to... explosion. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, uh, I'm double checking how often I get to do that. It's based on my fortitude, which. Oh, I'm I just sure the that... number next to it. So do you have to five wounds? One, one? or two, or three. I have done, well, it says one slash two slash three. Right, but what's the one in your sheet? Because that'll tell you what rank you that's, have it at. Well, that's what, it says it's based on my fortitude, but that's what I was no. asking is where my fortitude that's, is. That's all like how you buy it, not how you use it. Um, that makes no sense. Uh, like, I don't know what that know, term means. I know, I'll see the number I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I can use it at least once. If I get another wound, then we'll have to... Absolutely right. Uh, I'm calling up your sheet. Because I have no... Beyond that, I have nothing. Uh, Grindel. Uh, you have to five wounds one. So it's in the feats list on your character sheet. Uh, the one, two, three yeah. is, relates to how high you can buy it when you buy it. Uh, and okay. that's depending on your fortitude and prerequisites. What you have, though, is to five wounds one, which means you can use it once per combat. 
Okay, I don't, all I have is the list of feats. It doesn't say, and so I have the one, two, three. It doesn't say Defy Wounds one on my sheet. So I'll count on you to tell me what I have and have not. <laughs> you get, I have a character sheet, but it doesn't, hold, well, hold on. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I thought, yeah, 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 I see it now. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I see it. Yeah, thank you. Perfection itself. Sorry, uh, that was what I, yeah, I was, yeah, okay, cool. We're good. Yeah, so, so no, I do not have a wound is the, Perfect. Again, long-winded way of saying that. <laughs> and the two the uh, two other trucks pull up as this happens, and they kind of skid around because they don't want to go into the blast. And then one of them drives up to pick you up, and they want to know if they're going to continue forward or go back. Um, I mean, we were given our mission. Uh, we've got to so we've got to locate the. Uh, the volley, and I, I have no way of receiving new orders or giving that information back. So okay. I'm going to So you just maintain, give them a, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a hired gun. I'm here to do what I'm told. And I was told to go and take the this uh, rocket launcher out. So we're going to keep looking for it. Perfect. Um, I am going to like, I'll, I'll split the, the vehicles so that we're not clustered anymore because now <laughs> we don't have the range guy covering. I am the cover. So I guess maybe it's not a good idea for us to split because uh, do we see like okay i guess that was under the notice and you would have told me if i did but we don't see the rocket launcher at this point it's right in a few seconds like as that was happening they were running over there and you're driving over there those right at the rocket set you've only gotten about 250 feet so it'll be a little while until you get like it's it's maybe up to about a quarter mile away okay because uh, again you're you're you remember stories of those kinds of attack vehicles and they're generally from bombarding from a distance mm -hmm. as it was. Doing. Um, okay. Uh, in that case, um, we're not going to split too far apart so that if, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep. And if they were trying to pull us in this location, then they pause. They, I mean, I don't have anything else to go from than the vector we were on already. So you need a willpower save from Navad, please. Willpower save from Navad. Six D six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. I've got a six, a five. What am I, what is the roll against? Against a four here. Okay, so that is um one, two, three, six scores and uh four so four total scores four total scores against that all right one two three four uh there is a surge of energy from underneath the keep it passes through you and then flows out of you and four of the fires caused by the rockets are snuffed out. Okay. Uh, Goldwater, any orders? Everything's happening far away right now. Seems like it, at least at this point. Uh... Let's push. Hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna move stuff instead of okay. talking there. So don't uh, move it, don't move it more than like a more, yeah, that's fine. Like they're moving a quarter of the compound. That's fine. For cover. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about anything else over here. Um mm. I'm still waiting for something to happen here or here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to have Shannon roll a notice check for me using three dice against a four. Okay. Uh, I've got one and a six. Uh, it's two successes against a four. Okay. So uh, down on the south there, you see that dude just standing, not fighting the fire, just on the wall, keeping watch even though he's wounded. Uh, uh, the further, yeah, that guy right there. Yeah, yep. you should both be wounded because they have two. Yeah, uh, he notices 
the following. Okay. Uh, another, another ping of, oh, one, two, three. Oof. Or don't, don't don't you put another one down? Don't, don't. I, uh, so you see a force coming down the highway. Okay. There are as more than one vehicle, but there are maybe a couple dozen people, but you can't clearly get a breakdown from there. Okay. So these guys are gonna be screaming and hollering like hey we got we got people we got a the main force seems to be incoming from the south goldwater will certainly hear that all right can i get a view of what what's happening uh so you just see a four you'd have to get physically closer or get up in that sniper tower to get a look at exactly what those units are okay Okay, so you run over and start climbing up. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the bomb, meanwhile, in the bombed out strip mall, uh, uh, roll a d6. High is good, low is bad. Five. Okay, so it's good, which means you can attack first. Yay! So, uh, go ahead, none of you are wounded, but you give two units there. So that's going to be nine dice all together at close range. So it's against a four. So nine dice against a four with you. Nine dice against a four. Yes. Six. Okay, that's going to be. Checking my numbers, uh, you kill one of their units. <laughs> and the upside is they're not super great fighting at close range because they're armed for distance combat. I like to think that I just like put on the speed and then just like punched them with my arm. Head went. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, uh um, All the way around now. <laughs> back over to Grendel. Uh, you now see the vehicle. And the vehicle is uh, kind of a broad body truck that has uh, the missile launcher that's got uh, the nine uh, tubes in it. And it's clearly meant for this kind of bombardment. And it's also the kind that has uh, the outboard legs that will flip down to stabilize the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been set to be a firing position. And you don't see any people though. Okay, so this is like a probably a remote unit, or does it look like uh, it's manned from the inside? You don't see any rockets in the tubes. So that was that was the total of their. It may have been like the tubes from where you're sitting anyway, as you as you're riding up, they look empty to you. Damn it, we got played. Uh, they wanted to draw us out. About face, we're going back. We could swing back around and come back in the highway. To me, are you, is that to me? This is one of, your, one of your men. Is uh, uh, just uh, qu uh, quickest way back is the way we came. All right. Um, uh, All right, boys. Right, right back the right back the way we came. We want to go through the same hole that we made. We don't want to set off any more of those charges that we might have not triggered the first time through. Panama Joe, pour one out. Yeah, okay. Off you go. Uh, all right. At this point, uh, I'm going to start showing. We would see this shot through like a, a monocle. Uh, mm, somebody scope. Yeah, yeah, through Goldwater, looking down. Uh, you're going to see. He starts swapping out these pings for vehicles. Do 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 do
Do, 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 do. That's not good. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that's more what you're looking at. And uh, the vehicle up front is actually another one of those very heavily armored trucks. Uh, there's another couple of motorcycles backing it up. Uh, these are uh, actually uh, cut off. Uh, and they're basically some machine guns, but they're they're real short. So they're, they're this kind that was like bullpup, but like the really small body. It depends. Uh, uh, bullpup means that the um, it's actually a long gun, but the it fires from back here. Okay. So like you load the bullets back here and it actually fires from back here, not up like this, more like, yeah. anyway. Um, so they would have like, but if you mean more like a, like a World War II style tube gun. Yeah. 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 That's what I was thinking you, you were thinking in your head. Yeah. Uh, and all of this is coming down the road. So is it heading down the highway to like swing around or is this coming right at us this if you go look i tried to put that with the arrows there uh oh, okay those are your comes to like uh an off ramp and then down to the road that would lead to the door in the front right where your guys are gotcha now at this point they could fire at something it's a distant range but they have distant range numbers do you want to choose a target and yell at them to fire Yes. Okay. So I have people who can hit them from here? Uh, yeah, the Knights of Torg all have uh, distant numbers, don't they? Um, let me double check. Uh, yeah, four or better. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and uh, which we know we're not going to, I don't think we'll be able to take out the um, armored okay. vehicle with what we have. I think that would be really lucky. Um, so let's try and take out the, the motorcycles. Okay. So go ahead and roll for all of them. You, you're, those are unwounded. So the total of 12 dice scoring on a four or better. Okay. Well, dice. Yeah, the rain just hit us. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And then I get to re-roll three. Whoa. So that's cool it's still eight because it was four or better right and those motorcycles are gone yeah good Yay! job Bert. and do you want your uh, men off the wall at this point otherwise uh, you might get shot back at uh, Shannon oh yeah for sure so they're going to run back to the keeper behind it where do you want them uh, the, these guys here the two wounded settlers, like they're only going to be two dice each. Uh, do you want them in somewhere or just do you back them up somewhere? Just like, I'm going to, we're going to back them up this way. Okay, that's fine. And then I think these guys, because they have ranged weapons, are going to, actually, they're going to hold their position over here just in case something comes down the hill. It comes around. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, all right, so back, meanwhile, up top. Uh, I'm going to need a, another uh, six-headed die from Tanya. A uh, high is good for the, for the group. One is bad. Four. That's higher than, higher than, <laughs> higher than one. <laughs> Go ahead and make your attack, which is going to be four for the unwounded unit, two for the one that's wounded, which is six, plus one for you is seven dice. All right. Against that four or better. Let's go dice. Let's go dice. <laughs> Random numbers. Four. All right. So it is red now. They're going to come. And incidentally, they were all fours. Wild. 
All right, so you're now down to just one unit. No! Uh, I need Jordan to roll a d6. High is good for your group, one is bad. <laughs> Six. Um, yeah, that's good for our group. So you make good time. So I'm going to say you around now, you're going to show up uh, and you're back to the uh, about here. You're at the edge of the camp. Okay. Uh, all right. And I'm over here still mourning. Sorry. I was at, behind a roll. At this point, they swing around and end up here. He's picking up speed and it's going substantially faster than the units on foot, obviously. Mm. Uh, the ones with the rifles, uh, sorry, the guns, are actually going to open fire on the Knights of Torg. And they get that many dice. And they... Wow. That's another point of damage. But three isn't even half for you guys, is it? Nope. All right, that was pretty pathetic. <laughs> Torg is Torg! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all right. So at this point, uh, do the Knights of Torg shoot the rapidly approaching vehicle? Do you get back from the gate? Because it looks like it's going to rush the gate. I So okay. my, I have a plan. Yeah. And it's to let it hit the gate. So tell them to back up? No, I want oh. them to die. No, we're going to back them up. <laughs> <laughs> I decided I changed sides. I'm with Curse now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Makes tactical up. sense at this point. Yeah. Um, and then my like my plan from this point, yeah, is to let these people through and fucking take them apart. Okay. It's not the best plan, but it's a plan we got. So the truck. <laughs> it's a plan. We'll agree. Yeah. <laughs> the truck goes through the gate and turns out to not be a suicide van. Oh. Yay! It's at the gate, but does not. Ooh, that's bad, actually. Oh well. That means that all of those knights can all attack. Oh, so okay. that's uh, they all have full dice. That's twelve dice. All right. Uh, they score what the number at nearest three. So three or better on those twelve dice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reroll four. Eight successes plus plus three more, so eleven. Good lord! Wow, Torg is Torg. What can I tell you? Damn, Torg is Torg. Okay, so it is damaged. It's red, and they continue on the way, but they're not there yet. Uh, and then we go back to uh, up here in the strip mall. So go ahead and make your attack, which is only going to be five dice against four. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Five. Okay. And you get the last of them. You have cleared out uh, the the strip mall. Do you want to head back? Um, I mean, I want to pop in the photo booth real quick and then we'll head back, yeah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> a quick selfie? Yeah, a little. Uh, yeah. So, uh. Grendel, do you want to go in or do you want to go around? Uh, I mean, he in he's, 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 in a, he's, he's in a, I mean, you know, he's direct line. He's, yeah, so he's not, I don't, he would have no reason to think to go around. So yeah, he's just going to go back the way he came. Okay, so go ahead and move your uh, move your squad inside the gate there. Okay, and they're going to start heading down here. He doesn't uh, give me um, radio contact when he gets near, does he? Uh, yeah, as soon as I'm in range. Okay, then um, back up because I'm not going to have you go in. <laughs> well, what, how far is range? Because you're. I would think that red area. I think once you leave it, you'd be. Oh, so once I was okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, just basically squawk on and say uh, the rockets were a diversion. I lost a unit. Oh, uh, the rockets were a diversion. I lost a unit of uh, my last unit of Reavers. 
it was looked like it was operated remotely. It was meant to draw us out and there were no more charges within it. So we headed back. Where do you need me now? Sorry to hear that. Uh, where are you at this point? Northeast? Uh, yes, back, uh, back the way we came. They're uh, coming for- in through the southwest gate. Swing around and take them from behind. I right about okay. now. No, so, Mike, stop it. So how far? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I didn't get to move in, so I get to move. I get to move down now. This would have happened as you're doing this, so I need a, a notice check from the tower. That's me, yes, sir. I'm the noticeman. You know I'm noticing, serving you notice right now. Uh, here we go. Ooh. Four dice. Four dice. Uh, what am I rolling against? Uh, this would be against a five. Five. Okay, so I got two sixes, so I'll reroll those. Nice. Hey. And one more success. Okay, so, so you know good mentioned that the highway is on like a berm, like a built up berm. At this point, the unit I just put on the field comes up from the other side of that rise. Oh, no. So, you know, you've got the road, the, the hill down that way. Up from the other side comes the vehicle. The vehicle looks like a Warhammer 40k pulp mobile uh, with uh, a dude uh, in the like protected glass enclosure who's dressed like um, what's the I think it's called priest. What's the the band with the guy who wears the white skeleton skull? Oh, face? ghost. That's ghost. He looks like. Uh, a character, uh, one of the performers from Ghost in a 40k pulp mobile that is rigged with a flamethrower. Fun. No, well, these goblins didn't think so. <gasps> no! Uh, you just no. moved them. They were waiting and they were hiding and wait for so long. I know. And at this point, uh, Jordan, go ahead and swing down like you're going to. Okay. Uh, how far can I go? Uh, to about here. I'll put the car. Here, here, yeah. Go oh. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and place me. <laughs> okay. Cool. So there's you, and there's uh, your guy. At this point, you go ahead and make a notice check against a four. Okay. Okay, that's a six. That's a five. So, uh, yeah, two scores for success. So you see, you witness uh, the burning death of the goblins. Oh, no. There, there was about 20 of them. And the thing has got, like, it's, it's whoever's driving the thing has got, uh, it's almost like a uh, uh, satanic carnival uh, <laughs> thing where you're like, burn the goblins. You know, he's <laughs> burning around. And just laying out the fire, and you see that happening, and you see he's coming around back uh, of the the. Uh, he is also leading from well, he's not also because he didn't. He's clearly leading from behind and following uh, his units into the the settlement. What um, <laughs> is he is he in range of my mini gun? Uh, you can attack at uh, distant. From there. Okay. Hey Mike, do you mind if I go use the restroom real quick? Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's do a four minute uh, quick bio, and then yeah, do the, and do it then do the wrap up because they'll be. This does we'll seem like a good act break when the when the Pope from Hell shows up, the right? Pope, the Pope from Hell. <laughs> hell. Yeah, cool. just yeah, in pure cudge, you hear just uh, Grindle. Just, <laughs> oh! <laughs> I love it. All right, back in a sec. So, Grendel, you know the man in the Pope Mobile. He calls himself Creed. He is one of Curse's chief lieutenants. You've worked with him. He, he is a son of a bitch. Does that affect how you react, what you do? Uh, just makes me want to shoot his stupid face even more. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Creed, you egg-sucking son of a motherless. So you told the driver to gun as hard as he can? Uh, 
yeah uh we're i mean that was the direction we're heading anyway and uh as long yeah if he's within my range at all i mean otherwise i'm just sitting there being just be creed um so the the two um defenders there that shannon controls are going to get to shoot as the portmobile goes by mm-hmm. it's not actually portmobile but it's easiest to say that so you're gonna roll eight dice against the four better Eight dice against a four or better. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I just lose? Oh, my actually, hand? I'm sorry. They don't have, they're not close enough. Uh, that's, that's distant. The yeah, they're, they're, they're at, up. they're at that, they're, yeah, they're too far away. All right, he's going to go that way. He's going to go that way. That's okay. fine. You're coming back down. Um, Twofer, you'd be going in the, rear gate without necessarily knowing what's going on right right okay so let's go ahead and head you so am, uh, am i not shooting him then or oh we'll get to you in a second okay sorry i thought we had okay. no 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 here, right. here. I'll, put, I'll put my eh. Cut. sorry i thought that's where we had left things <laughs> going back they're ready i'm not gonna go up there to defend the wall um now i'm gonna have this and you're gonna go forward you end up here uh and at this point you're better off commanding your unit to shoot than doing it individually to try to stop the vehicle when it stops you could probably go to individual combat um but so that would be two full units silver that's the maulers that's going to be far so uh jordan go ahead and roll nine dice with a four or better hitting Okay, hold on. Okay, you said nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this nice. this actually includes your gun. It's basically you're coming in with your unit. Everyone's firing. Okay. Nine. Um. Okay, let's see. It's so dire. That's... It feels dire. And you said uh, four, four better. Yep. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's re-rolled two. Oof. That's an additional. So um, uh, but, but, sorry. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, se- se- seven scores. Okay, so you damage the vehicle, but you don't destroy the vehicle, so it's still moving. Uh, and at this point, inside, uh, do the Knights of Torg want to try to take out the van before it crashes into the sniper tower? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would be that would be good. I think it sounds like a great plan, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Twelve. To 12? So roll all those dice. Yep. Against Meanwhile, the these guys are collapsing down to uh, get a hand if they can. Perfect. Yes. No four better. Uh, they are going to be at close range. Yeah. Sorry. Close is three. Yep. So three or better. Three or better. Okay. Makes no difference. Weirdly enough. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then I grab all three of those. No, four of those. Six, six total. Okay, goodbye, man. Woohoo! Good job. The knights are badass. Yeah. Uh, so they come up to there, they come up beside them. And they stand in front of them defensively. So the baseball bats are armed with melee weapons. Uh, the ones that have the grenade have uh, vests with grenades hanging off of them. And uh, what they, they yeah, the gun is a gun. Uh, the grenades are thrown. Yeah. Do a bad job. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good. Oh. Nah. Mm. Guns. Two, and they have uh, the knights have eight four. Okay, so that's going to be 
So that unit goes red. Okay, making sure this is all kept up. Um, where is Tufer gone? Where has Tufer gone? Um, <laughs> um, I think uh, as soon as she got uh, within range, like in the gate, uh, she would have been on the walkie and been like, um, I'm uh, uh, two units down, but uh, we, we cleared the strip mall. Uh, where, where do you need us? Grab everybody you can and head to the southeast entrance, southwest entrance. I, I go to the southeast. No, okay. No, <laughs> no entrance there. Um, okay. So you see Navad. Do you want to head over to Navad then down or do you go the other way? Um, like, oh, are we going to go this way around the oh, north? I'm right. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll head across the north as we come down. Okay, mm -hmm. so head over to about where Navad is. Yeah. And at this point, uh, Grendel, Oop. you see something drop from the bottom of the vehicle. We're going to call it the vehicle. <laughs> and then you hear a very loud buzzing noise, and four drones emerge and shoot the direction of the cars. What do you do? Uh, evasive maneuvers. Okay, so. Try not to get <laughs> shot. Veer, yeah, like, veer, I veer. Make First, I say, test. oh shit. <laughs> drive test for the one that you're not in. So, four dice against a five. Uh, two fives. Okay. So, two scores for a success. I'm using the terms. <laughs> you're really doing great. You're doing yeah, no great. doubt. Like, I'm having a hard time. You're doing awesome. I know. Why? Why? And then You're for showing us up, Jordan, and I don't like it. I just, I, I, if I, <laughs> so for your driver, same this deal. Is, this is me doing uh, the pizza, French fries, pizza, French fries. This is all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, four dice against a five again. Four dice. Okay. Oh. Um, none. None, none. Highest one I got was a four. Yeah, I need an awareness check from Grendel. You need a what check? Awareness. Okay. <laughs> what check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did I did that on purpose. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Grendel don't hear so good. Uh, and uh, awareness against uh, what? This is going to be against a four. Okay, I got uh, one score, so a partial. Partial, okay, and now give me that reflex check again, or okay. acrobatics if it's higher. Uh, let me check. Uh, let's see. I don't remember you being much for acrobatics, though. No, acrobatics is too looking for reflex. Or is that a reaction, do you mean? or Reaction, thank you. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I like on four different games, I get confused. You're and totally I'm fine. You're totally fine. Yeah, reaction is three, acrobatics is only two. So uh, I got a six. And okay, so and it was reaction against a what? Uh, this is going to be against a four. Four? Okay, so I got a, I got a one score, so a partial success. So you're going to take 12 more hits. And one wound. Okay. Are you with zero hits? Um, let's see. I had, so that was twelve. And what was the? Sorry, I was twelve and ten. So you've twelve and ten. So I'm at twenty-two. And uh, my 22 fortitude. Times. My my fortitude brings me up to. That's all that, figured out. You shouldn't even be looking at that. Your maximum hits. Okay. Time. Left -hand side, but then I don't know why you gave it to me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want me reading things, you shouldn't give me things to read. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I have, so let's see. So that's uh, 10 and 12 is. You don't need 20. to do the math. The comments I do need to do the math. You just asked me how many hits I have left. <laughs> okay. So if I have, so I have 24 hit, maximum hits. You asked me to subtract from that. That's math. Okay. So I have two hits left. <laughs> and you, okay. 
<laughs> and uh, you've taken 24 one. minus 22 is two. I know that much. I'm not great at math, but I, I can do that. <laughs> it took me five minutes, but I can do it. <laughs> you, had to, you had to vamp to do it. You've taken one wound, but since you didn't go to zero hits, you're fine. So narratively, I think we're a pretty good place because what happens is uh, the car and the people with you die in flames. You roll and you come up flaming, but quickly like do this shit. Yeah. Uh, you see the other <laughs> the other car has swerved because he made a very good drive roll and is heading over to take on this group going into the settlement through the main gate. Good. That which was means what I was going to tell them to do. You're facing off against the, the, the vehicle, which has now stopped and the back opens and the gentleman in the robes gets out and he pulls out two maces which are, they look like uh, holy water sprinklers, but they're over ornate. Uh, but you've seen him beat people to death with these things. And he yells across the flaming battlefield, Grendel! Um, and do I have, is this, so is this my turn or his turn? Oh, we're in narrative space now. What do you okay. Do? To do. What I wanted to do was if we're I, in the talk uh, shit times. Well, oh, okay, because uh, I wanted to, I wanted to use my my second wind. Ooh, perfect. Um, to recover a number of hits equal to my endurance plus my willpower. Perfect. So you you pan out the flames, take a deep breath, and ah. And that's uh, so I have I have nine back, so I'm sitting at eleven total at the moment. And yeah, I just pat it out. And I just don't even, and I'm like, I'm just shaking my head as I look at him. I don't even say anything. And I'm just like, I put the mini gun away and I get the grav hammer out and give it like a swing to activate it. He seems nice. gratified when you do that and does like the double handed flip of the two maces and gets out of the vehicle and starts striding towards you. All right. Uh, we now have uh, two units a one wounded of the Knights of Torg who can shoot uh, at the defenders here. So that's going to be six dice. Um, you could be actively commanding them from the tower if you're not doing anything else, Goldwater. I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> okay, so you're going to roll seven total dice. And whatever your near, it's a, your near is a three. So you're rolling for three or better. Okay. Um. Two, three, four, and then reroll two, four, five, six, reroll one, six. Okay. One entire unit of those melee defenders are just ripped down. Your guys <laughs> just take them out. Uh, and at this point, the mod, uh, oh, you wanted um, these guys to be up helping. So go ahead, um, Shannon. That's going to be six dice. And near for you is going to be against a four. Six, six dice against a four. Six against a four. Okay. Here we go. I got one, two, three, four successes. You know, I'm actually thinking that the, this rain is actually special, very expensive special effects. For the Can y'all hear the thunder? Like it? Yeah. Are you guys? Are you guys picking that up? Yeah. Well, I you, can't. You know, no. like Colt is just this good, right? Yeah. Like this is clearly Colt's doing. My <laughs> house is literally shaking with thunder. Well done, Colt. <laughs> nice. Well done. Thanks, Colt. <laughs> Hey, when when you have a storm god guest, uh, I, I got to bring it with me. So. Go, baby. <laughs> ah. All right, so Navad Tufer and the goblins, uh, new goblin. This fall. Oh. Uh, yeah, but that's about eight goblins. Remember that? Oh, okay. Do you head down to help the defense at the gate? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Navad will be able to help actively contribute to that. Um, so you does. These are not ranged units for you, right, Tufer? He's correct. The, uh, we've lost all the ranged goblins. These Are are charged close. those people. What do you do? Yes. These okay. Wait. So the, the 
the baseball bats that are armed. Yeah. Uh, you charge them, try to take them out. And then people? what's what's grenade? I guess grenade means people with grenades. They're literally there's there's gunmen and people with grenades and the melee and the melee people. Protect like if you take out that baseball bat, you can just mow down those gunmen. Yeah, I would love I would love to grab a hunk a car out of our wall and sling it at the group of melee folk and hope to also maybe hit the people behind them. Well, at this point, uh, we've quoted this many times in the uh, year plus we've been playing this ridiculous thing. Uh, one of my favorite gaming slogans, which is uh, rolling dice is for when the outcome of an action is uncertain. When the outcome of an action is not uncertain, don't roll the fucking dice. Right. Uh, so, I think most of Do the for rest, good at throwing things. Most <laughs> rest, not just that. I think most of the rest of the wrap up here will be narrative, except for one important thing, which I'll get to at the end with Jordan. So I think what I see here is I see uh, the Knights of Torg. Basically, half of them are still able to fight. Like one whole unit is out, and the other one's at half. But they're still at half power. And you have three PCs up there. You've got about 20 militia. And that says to me that once uh, Tufer throws something big to get them to scatter, and then the goblins just rush and tear them limb from limb. Like I you do. They're going to flee. And then the other vehicle. Ha ha! Gobsmacks. Yeah. Nah, way to get them, goblins. Mercenaries <laughs> on it. We'll chase them down and just start killing them as they flee. All right. Yeah. Also, I think if he's interested in such things, uh, Goldwater could be, you know, plucking, uh, you know, uh, tops off daisies from a distance if you like. No, I'll probably just come down from the sniper. <laughs> All right, honestly. Okay. It's like you're a, a good tactician, but not really that much of a stone blow, stone cold killer, you know. Also, heights are necessary. just disconcerting. So, so that to me says the one bit of business we have left is Creed against Grendel. So Creed comes walking up and you realize that the whole outfit he's making, he's wearing, is made out of battle weave. So he's wearing a battle weave, he's basically vestments. Um, and you, you know the guy is strong. Because like I said, it's, the things aren't like props and they're not proper like wood. They're basically chunks of metal that are painted to look like clerical things and he just plays a grisly beat on anyone that wants to play with him what's your speed sir my speed is seven you have a faster reaction time than he does so you may go first Woo-hoo. okay so the way you do that is you're going to roll your brawl melee okay and roll your weapon on the in the combat summary in the lower left the first range category is close, and that will give you the difficulty of your brawl melee attempt. Okay. Um, so close is four, and close is all I have with this. So that's four. I think it's a four because it does horrendous damage. It is. Yeah, it's four, and I'm rolling five dice. So. And one of them fell. Uh, but that's three fives, four fives. Four, so four scores for okay. So that's yeah. gonna them. and I'm gonna very quickly peek at your sheet to make sure there isn't anything that I could advise you to use. I don't want you to miss out on any like special bonuses. Yeah, I think most everything. Well, I have the Slayer that uh, I can use to make more damage, but but that's for the damage roll, which I yeah. assume is to come. Yeah, yeah. If you roll a shitty one, you can reroll. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, so that does mean that you just do a straight up damage roll then. So uh, his armor is going to be his defense is four. So you're rolling your damage dice with a four difficulty. Okay, so and that's the my damage dice is the first. No, the that's first the five D. That... Weapon summary. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's five, and you said that's five against a four. Yep. Okay. So same as before. Let's see if you're, I... you're totally caught up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's. So three successes so far, but two of them are sixes. So, oh. oh, no, this is, sorry. 
Um, that's not. It's, so let's see. Okay. So I got, let's see, 12 plus. So I'm adding everything up. No, uh, it's uh, all the things, all the tests work exactly the same. Okay. All right. So I got, um, so I got three, three scores. Okay. So what's the power of your weapon? Uh, the power of my weapon is also the power of love, uh, is a uh, three. Okay. So every score inflicts three damage. Okay. So that means you did nine points, which is a hell of a lot with a hammer. So the way the graph hammer works is basically it shifts its mass as you come down. So it comes down harder than when you had to lift it. Uh, and it, some of its power is clearly going to be absorbed uh, by the armor he's wearing. But his armor is not as good against bashing as it is. You wouldn't want to try to cut through that weave with a knife. The basher turns out to be the right thing, right? Like you hear bones crunch. Mm. Uh, he doesn't quite give you the gratifying cry of pain, but he does that like, oh, uh, that like grunt to shrug it off. Uh, and then I just give him a little grin. <laughs> he's going to try a uh, double strike. Uh, which means uh, I'm going to attack and I have to score an exceptional success. If I do, I get two attacks for damage. But if I fail, nothing, or I only get one success, it doesn't hit at all. Okay. So basically trying all or nothing. Uh, and he says your name again. He grins widely. <laughs> and then rolls three threes and a five. Uh, Jackass McGee manages to miss you completely. Just uh, <laughs> Do you want to give him another uh, up, uh, tiger uppercut with your grab hammer? Hell yeah, I'm I'm swing I'm swinging until one of us falls. Uh, let's see, that one's cocked. Uh, it's still it's not any good anyway. Uh, let's see. So that is uh, let's see three scores, but two of them are sixes, and that doesn't. Uh, so yeah, three three scores because I got nothing on the rear rolls. <laughs> So he is almost down. Uh, you hit him again, so you've done 18 hits to him. He staggers back, and I think I'll invest in a, a special effects cutaway of you seeing him laugh as the squad that you were leading was uh, taking people out of the village they were burning, and of him laughing. And then we cut back to him, and he takes a single swing at you because he learned his lesson. He's going to do eight hits which will deal another wound. And I think you said, what, you were at nine or 10? Uh, I was at, uh, I'm, I was at 11. So you're I, I was at two and I added nine to it with my second win. So you're down uh, to three and you've taken two wounds total and you're okay. still up. So you can counterattack. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so another, another five. Uh, okay. So that's, um, and you said I'm rolling against a four? Yes. Okay, so that's uh, four, four scores. Jeez, okay, do your damage. Same deal. And, okay, and let me see. That's against a four. Okay, so it's against three. Okay, uh, so let's see, that's one, two, three. Uh, yeah, three. Describe, three, 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 three scores. Describe the final blow. It may be killing if you choose it to be. Um, so he comes in with the, like, you know, just the one mace across the chest. And I lean into it and bring, as I'm bringing the graph hammer up from behind and just swing up, catch him under the chin and just cleave it clean. I mean, it just like tears like, and it's not, this isn't a cut, this is a hammer. So it like tears part of his spine out with it and just sends it flying into the flames. And then like, as his body clumps down, I just, just spit on the body and start like limping my way back uh, so to the settlement. We would go back around the camera, would swing around from the point of view of the three PCs uh, who are standing at the destroyed front gate. Uh, you have, Defended Bastion. Bastion did indeed burn, but minimal damage essentially was done. There was loss of lives, 
but nobody that wasn't fighting and you lost less than a third of your defenders, which is actually considering there were explosives and a, a rocket launch. It felt like yeah. so much more. <laughs> it felt pretty chaotic. It really, yeah, especially <laughs> at the beginning. These guys are just like chilling out up here, you know? It's like, so uh, I, 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 I come up to Goldwater and I just like whispered and it was like, we got a flamethrower if you want it. And just like go past him and just keep limping to whatever medic station there is. Or wherever I can sit down because I heal on my own. So. so this was Goldwater's battle. Final words, Goldwater? Nice job. All right. And I think yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, between Mike and Shannon, Shannon's up today for, for uh, uh, outro. There's, there's no mic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, hey, um, uh, this is, okay, we defended, uh, we war gamed the heck out of that thing. So uh, we, defended, <laughs> we defended Bastion. Huge thanks to Tanya for uh, jumping in tonight. Um, and, uh, and huger thanks uh, to Jordan, who's jumped in for the last two sessions. Thank you, Mr. Jordan Maxwell, uh, for playing. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for, uh, for two for Tanya. Uh, we really appreciate you. Um, and we want to give a shout out to uh, our, our usual suspects, Andreas Favis, on our opening narration. Uh, Colt Joyce, our technical director. Uh, Brett Grimstad, our uh, uh, our, uh, our archivist and uh, librarian, um, and all of the mods. Uh, we thank you all very, very much. And until next time, we'll see you in the wasteland.